Welcome back. It is Sunday, March 26th in the NBA. My three favorite picks are on the way. Let's recap yesterday, a one and two day. Russell Westbrook does go under in his points. Bam on had a great first half. Then the Nets went on a 31 to six run to start the third quarter. Thanks for that heat. And then the Nuggets same game parlay does not hit. Jokic hits his points. Jamal hits his assist. So does uh, Jokic, but he does not get eight rebounds. Ends with six. I think there are everyone else in the starting lineup had at least six. Some of them seven or eight rebounds. Just didn't grab, feel like grabbing boards yesterday. Either way, I'm tired of losing money. Because today is a big day and we ain't losing some money today. We're going at least two and well, one, hopefully three and oh, because why? Well, today's my birthday. And so I appreciate all you guys for showing. I tweeted that out just a minute ago and you guys have been trying to send tons and tons of love my way. I see all the comments. I can't respond to all of them, but I do want to say thank you guys all for supporting the channel for the people watching on a Sunday, which is normally our least viewed videos. You guys are the real OGs, but everyone that watches, likes, comments, whatever you do, I appreciate you guys. We wouldn't be in this position to be able to do these videos every single morning, do this as a full-time job if it weren't for all of you out there. So appreciate you guys if you are curious i'm turning 26 on the 26th so it's my golden birthday today's the good vibes are in there we're having a good day speaking into existence we're locking in today i appreciate you guys as always for all the comments that i probably won't be able to get to all of them i love you guys you guys have changed my life so many different ways but it's time to lock in look we got good i got three plays we got three winners coming your way let's dive into the first one it's the earliest game on the slate for the hornets and the mavericks take on each other i'm going with dennis smith jr of the charlotte hornets but i have two picks for him i'm taking his over six and a half assists currently minus 140 on DraftKings. so i'll put one unit on that so only put one unit so if your unit size is like 100 bucks you put 100 bucks on his over six and a half assists probably wins back something 60 ish 70 dollars now i'm putting also a quarter of a unit on him to record a double double which is probably going to be 10 points and 10 assists which is currently plus 500 on bet 365 now like i said this is an early start at 1 p.m eastern time if your line is seven and a half assists maybe you just consider going down to just the double double which is currently plus 500 on bet 365 and i believe on uh i forgot the other book that had him at, i think the barstool had him there i think DraftKings was plus 490 vandal was all the way down to plus 340 so probably would not take that but let's talk about dsj and why do we like him now let's talk about him i think he can get us a double double and yes we were just burned by a hornet in terror regier a couple days ago that was a little shady that was fishy but with only seven games remaining, I do not expect a guy like DSJ to just randomly get benched, randomly just not play his minutes here. I mean, this is a guy that's trying to earn himself a big payday. He's a free agent this offseason. And while here, a guy like Rozier, he's locked in for the Hornets for the next three to four years. They don't really need him to go out there and show what he's worth. But DSJ does. He's trying to earn himself a payday, whether it's with the Hornets or someone else. And I think he can easily be a great backup point guard for another team and get a decent payday this offseason. So he has some incentive to play pretty well over these last seven games. Now, Terry Rozier, the guy we don't want to talk about, up, doubtful to play here i really don't expect him to play and even if he does like i said i don't expect him to play a big workload here but if he does play you'll see dsj's line probably go down you could take it there now kelly Ubre is questionable now Ubre also a free agent like a DSJ this offseason. So Ubre could play, but Ubre's not really a guy that's going to have the ball in his hands a ton. He's more of a catch and shoot guy, a guy that attacks the rim. Actually, is a pretty good assist threat for a guy like DSJ to get to the ball to. He's going to fire it up. And we look at with Rogier out, we're going to need you know, a guy like that to knock down some shots. But I also think DSJ can go out there and do his thing. In their last game versus Dallas, the Hornets won outright. They were 17 point underdogs, and they said, nah. We don't need the points. So they won outright, beat the Mavericks. And in that game, DSJ, 13 points on four of nine shooting. So he got us the 10 plus points. But more realistically, we need the assists today. And he had nine assists in that game. So he had his regular over six and a half assists, was one assist shy. Now he played 30 minutes in that game. I expect him to play around 25 to 30 minutes here. And in that game, he had 22 potential assists. So his teammates weren't knocking down shots, which is why I'm fine if Kelly Oubre Jr. does want to play today because it's the guy, Kelly Oubre, he can knock down shots as well. So hey, look, I and mean, that might get him a better ch chance at getting the 10 plus assists. But we've seen the Mavericks last 15 games allowed the most assists per game to opposing point guards in the NBA over the last six games DSJ even with Rozier playing in five of them has averaged seven assists per game 14.8 potential assists and 8.8 adjusted assists in 30 minutes of action so he's still been playing his normal 30 minutes I don't see him playing you know randomly 37 minutes but hey I won't complain but I also don't see him playing like 20 minutes today barring an injury so I like him to go out there play pretty well get his 30 minutes and this should be a, a fast-paced game the Mavericks we know haven't been playing really good defense I imagine a lot of people are loading up Mavericks money line in some parlays because no chance they lose to the Hornets twice in a row I think the Hornets can at least keep this close but as long as they're within you know 25 points I think DSJ will get his minutes and he will have the ball in his hands a lot so we'll ride with him to get over six and a half assists which is juiced I don't normally play a lot of juice props but to hopefully get us some more just to get us some more units back we'll take a quarter unit on his double double plus 500 hopefully you can get that we can cash out big time with Mr. DSJ now the other two plays are later on in the day and we'll go to this one he's probably on the thumbnail we're actually gonna be fading him a little bit it's Donovan Mitchell I like his under eight and a half rebounds plus assists minus 110 on DraftKings now 
Nina individual line, and lead is under four and a half assists, which was a little bit juiced. Also, I think the four and a half rebounds is an interesting line because Mitchell has been rebounding the ball really well, and his rebounds line is still plus money on four and a half, which he's been having like six plus in a couple recent games. So maybe the rebounds are coming down here. Maybe I think he gets a couple more assists, but I think the rebounds will carry us to this winner. Now, this is minus 110 on DraftKings. I would not play it at seven and a half personally. Now, let's talk about Donovan Mitchell. I honestly think this is a great spot for him to score a lot of points as over the line, they're playing the Rockets. And let's be honest, this is a 14 point spread. Now, while we can't predict blowouts, there's been a lot of blowouts recently and the Cavaliers are a team that it would be great if they could blow out a team, play hard defense in the first half, and then blow out their team and then rest their starters to the end of the third into the fourth quarter. And you look at the Rockets, they haven't been great by any stretch of the imagination. Over the last 30 games, the Rockets have led the most points per game to shooting guards. So a guy like Spida can go out there and felt that he can score for 50 points for all I care. All that we care is that if he's scoring a lot, hopefully he's not passing to his teammates, not getting a lot of rebounds. And over the last 30 games, the Rockets fifth fewest rebounds per game allowed to shooting guards. So look, Mitchell, he can be a takeover mode, score a lot of points. That's fine with us. But everyone's healthy on the Cavaliers. Mobley will be out there. Jared Allen will be out there. Those are the two guys that are going to grab a lot of rebounds. I don't know if Raul Neto will play, but not really worried about that. But look, Spida, if you look at his last like nine games in March with Darius Garland, he can go out there and play pretty well, but still go under this line. And we've seen Spida, he's had some injuries nagging him all year long, especially some hamstring injuries. He will not be played. If this is a blot, he's not getting played in that fourth quarter. If they're up by like 20 going into the fourth, he just won't. They normally doesn't play those, you know, bench minute starters. Those are normally Garland's minutes. So hopefully we can get a blot here. But either way, in the last nine games with Garland all in March, he's averaged 5.3 rebounds per game and 3.1 assists per game. That's good for 8.4 rebounds plus assists. So right at this line. In those games, we've seen him have six, seven, 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 eight, eight, nine, nine, and 15 rebounds plus assists. So he's gone under in six of those nine games. Of the three games he went over, he played 40, 44, and 47 minutes. If the Cavaliers are playing Donovan Mitchell for 40 plus minutes today, some of those games going into overtime, like that's not a good recipe. I mean, you're asking for him to get injured in a game against the Rockets. But either way, the Cavaliers don't need really these wins. I mean, they're sitting this four seed. They're five games above the Knicks, who are the five seed. So they pretty much got that locked in. And they're two and a half games beyond the Sixers for the three seed. So while they could push, make a final push to try to get to the three seed, I just don't know if that's realistic for them to get there with only, you know, a couple games left in the season. So maybe we see Donovan Mitchell maybe play a little less minutes as they go into the all into the uh, playoffs. So I'll fade Donovan Mitchell. I think he has a big game, a big game scoring, but I just don't think he gets a lot of rebounds and assists. We'll take the under eight and a half combined. I don't really have an individual one. I could see him going under in both of them. Hopefully he makes it a no sweat bet, but probably won't be. He'll probably end on six, seven or eight. Let's move on to my third and final play of the day. Normally this is a bankroll builder and I wanted to give you guys one, but honestly, I don't like a lot of games. Got a lot of big spreads here. Just gonna go to this one another third player prop but if you want to do a builder go out there go crazy i'm going cam johnson under 15 and a half points minus 110 on points bet now you can take this at 14 and a half don't mind his 14 is that points plus rebounds probably sitting at i don't know 20 and a half i don't mind that there but let's be honest cam is probably gonna have to go under points to hit any of these lines now I'll just take points here because I want to fade him after he's coming off a great game. And if I'm being honest, there is a chance that Cam Johnson does not play today. A guy like Jock Vaughn has always been messing with the rotations. The Nets are coming off a back-to-back. -back. Wouldn't be surprised if the Nets just rest him and he doesn't play. But a lot of books don't have lines for Cam Johnson, so maybe he doesn't play. But I know FanDuel does, points bet does. So I'll take his under 15 and a half points. If he doesn't bet, it's a play, it's just going to void. But I'll take my chances on it. Now, last night we saw Johnson, 23 points, 9 for 13 shooting, 5 for 8 from 3. And he absolutely cooked the heat. Now the heat can blame themselves. They left him wide open on pretty much all the possessions. And that's how he scored 15 points in the first half. But Johnson, predominantly a three-point shooter. And he, if he's not hot from deep, he's going under this line. And he's under this line in seven or of his last 10 games, averaging just 13.9 points per game. Normally, when you see him having above 50% field goal shooting game, normally follows up with a bad shooting game. And the only time he gets over when he has a bad shooting game is going to be against these random like six plus free throw attempts games. So I think if the Magic can hold their hands to themselves. I think they have a good chance of getting Cam Johnson under this under this line if he plays. He's never guaranteed minutes. They like their guys off the bench like Royce O'Neal. Seth Curry's out today, but you two Watanabe can play his minutes. And so I think those guys, Joe Harris and whatnot. So look, the Magic, very neutral matchup. They're not great at defense. They're not terrible at defense. They'll go out there and hopefully just guard Cam Johnson and make him put the ball on the ground to beat them. And this is just a gut call. I mean, Jack Vaughn, we've seen him mess around with rotations left and right. We've seen guys not play the whole fourth quarter. And that's just what he does. I mean, they're on a back-to-back. -back. They're now underdogs against the Orlando Magic. So could the Magic blow him out? Yes. Could the Nets blow out the Magic? Yes. Any blowout could happen with the Magic these days. But the fact that they're underdogs and they're, they just blew out the heat, 
I think that's pretty telling that I think the magic win here today. I don't think Cam Johnson has a big night. I'll fade him after a good night for him. Look, give me Cam Johnson's under 15 and a half points. So those are my three favorite plays. Cam Johnson under 15 and a half points. Stonovan Mitchell under eight and a half rebounds plus assists. And then we're going with that Dennis Smith Jr. putting one unit on his over six and a half assists and then a quarter unit on him to record a double-double for likely 10 plus points and 10 plus assists. Appreciate you guys as always. You guys are always the real MVPs. I appreciate you for everything in advance. If people are this far into the video and you're curious what I am doing on my birthday, not one, you guys are an OG for being 10 minutes and like 20 seconds in, but I'm, I believe my fiance has some sort of dessert tour that we're going to go on. So I'll probably be stuffing my belly with a bunch of sugar. So we'll see how we feel tomorrow. But either way, let's have a great day. Love you guys so much. 26 on the 26th, the golden birthday. Good vibes in the air. Love you guys. You guys are awesome. I'll see you guys back again tomorrow morning. Peace out.